All right, next up we're going to add another layer and we're going to be drawing lines. And to show you what I mean, let's take a look at the original. Uh, this is a good example. Here's another one where we're just drawing lines. Very, This one's very, well, it's exactly the same as what we were doing with test lines, right? But there's an added feature here, which is we can choose where the line starts and ends. What's interesting about this system is that it seems to line up with these steps that the hexagon is making too. So ideally, in plain English, we would like to say, create a line that starts three steps out and ends six steps out. And this distance of a single step is something that we'll define in our system and we can use it for drawing these lines. We can use it for drawing the hexagons here and we can use it for drawing these shapes where they start um, relative to the center point. So this is a good thing to do early on so that we can use it wherever we want. I should take a, a quick moment to say that we're not going to be doing everything exactly the way that Ruth Lynn has designed here, partly because she designed them in a different way. She did them all manually, and so some things may not make sense to you know develop an entire feature around uh, for a system, but also because it's a great starting point, but um, we're just trying to build something that demonstrates how you might do this. And if you want to figure out how to do everything that she's done, all of the features, all the combos, then you can take this as, as far as you want after the, the series is over. So just to set expectations there. Let's head back over to our code and get working. And the first thing I want to do is a little bit of house cleaning. You may have wondered why we didn't move these into helpers and you would have been correct in wondering that. We can totally move these to helpers because they're not directly related to the drawing stuff that we're doing. So I think it's better to just move these over into the helpers.js and they'll be loaded along with all those other helper files. And just to try things out, let's make sure everything is still working. And yep, everything looks to be working just fine. Good. So uh, let's keep test lines. Well, let's, let's turn both of these off for a second and let's create something new. Let's call it simple lines. It's not a constant, it's a function. All right, and it's basically going to do the same thing as test lines, right? It's just going to draw lines from the center. What it's not going to do is draw a circle on the outside so we can get rid of that. And uh, that's pretty much it as far as that goes. Um, we're also going to use stroke color. Um, I can type that we've uh, set up here. We can get rid of this. And we don't need angle to be calculated inside of this push pop. Um, it's probably better to just be doing it out here. And then all of the drawing related stuff here. Um, stroke weight. Why don't we randomize that too? Um, we've done that. Where do we do it? Right here. So we'll say the stroke weight. And then add that line back in down here. Cool. Let's try that out. We should just see some lines. I'm not sure why we're, oh, because we haven't called it yet up here. Simple lines. Okay, we're basically back where we started, thin or thick. Uh, looks like we do, uh, we do have the number of shapes, six or 12, all is good there. So what we need to build now is this ability to start and stop anywhere. So again, I think the plain English thing is really nice, uh, a way to think about it, or pseudocode. I want to start a line three steps out. I want it to end six steps out. What that means is uh, we need a system that will choose two numbers for us, a start and a stop. The other thing it means is that we need to know what this distance is because we're drawing in pixels. Every time we rotate, we need to know how many pixels on the x-axis to move in order to start it. So two things, we want to build a system that returns two numbers. And then we also need to calculate this distance. So let's start with the two numbers and let's try to make this as easy as possible. I'm just going to make sure I'm doing this right by pulling it up in my reference over here. All right. So at the beginning here, let's just set a really stupid, simple variable and call it steps out. There are eight of these lines here. It looks like our other option is 10 according to Ruth's system, but really it can be any, uh, any proportion you you'll see, in, in her designs, like six and 12 or eight and 10, there's always a proportion. Six to 12 is times two, eight to 10 is times 1.25. Um, these proportions in our system should always be expressed as um, 
ratio relationships, not as hard-coded numbers. So you might think initially that what we want to do in order to determine the number of steps that are available to us, in this case 8, in this case 10, we should be able to just use random select 2 and choose between 8 and 10, right? But we want to be a little bit smarter than that, which is why we're using variables. And we can use those variables to do something like this, steps out times 1.25. That way, if we change steps out, we'll always get something that's proportionally larger and nice and even. Well, it's not even yet because we haven't turned it into an integer. So I'm just going to turn it into an integer. You could also use floor here if that's what you want to do. But for some reason, I did it this way. And I'm just going to trust myself because that's the, the thing to do. OK, cool. So now we've just been able to create um, something that helps us decide how many steps there are going to be. That's fine. Now we need to figure out what, the, what that distance is, because it's smaller here than it is there. And we do that by just taking the radius and dividing it by however many steps we have. So let's do that. Uh, a single step is equal to our radius, which is that, divided by the number of steps we have. That's simple enough. Next up, we need to figure out where to start our line and where to end it. And in our plain English, it's 3 and 6, which is really just a num any round number, whole number, between 0 and the next to last one. That's what our start can be. We don't want to start at the last one and go nowhere, right? So anywhere between 0 and the next to last one. So we'll call that start. And uh, that's between 0. Oops and num steps. That's going to return a decimal number, a floating point. So we want to wrap that. And we're going to round down. That means that the highest number we can get is 7.999999. It's going to round that down to 7. That means that we'll always be at the next to last one. So this works out just fine. Let's do it the same for stop. We're going to get a whole number anywhere between wherever we started and num steps plus one. The reason we have to plus one is because if we're rounding down, we have to be able to get over the last possible number and then round back down to it. So just some easy math there. Cool. So now we have everything we need to say start at three, end at six, and now we know how many pixels that is so the system can draw it, and that's not bad at all. So how do we actually draw that? Well, we were drawing from zero and then going out to um, to each one of these numbers but we, w we don't want to do that anymore instead just along the x-axis we want to um, do a certain number of steps and then we want to stop at a certain number of steps and we want to remain on the x-axis. We don't need to do any y information whatsoever. So if we, oh, steps is not defined. True, it's just step. If we check this out, cool. So we should see 12 or six, pink or blue. We just saw both of those, thick and thin. Let's see if we can get a thin one. There it is, awesome. Next, we want to see if this is within the limits of our system. So let's put test lines out there and see if these work. Oh, that's so cool. Awesome. So you can, even with these, just the test lines in there, you can begin to see how these different layers, these simple layers add up to create what looks to be a complicated shape. Great. This all looks good. Let's keep moving. 